Discovering a new glitch or strategy in any video game should be universally praised, no matter the consequences. It represents a breakthrough in what we know about the game, offers an additional small window into the inner mechanics operating on the inside, and in the best cases, can lead to a cascade of discoveries based on the freshly gained knowledge. However, in the context of speedrunning, new groundbreaking glitches with the potential to heavily overhaul existing routes and tactics can generally go in one of two ways. Either they become welcomed by the community because they solve some tricky part of the run, make a boring section of the run faster or more enjoyable, make something extremely difficult much easier to achieve, or the new discovery is simply fun to execute. I've covered such a rare occurrence in the case of the PromSwap glitch, which ultimately improved almost all Dark Souls and Dark Souls Remastered speedruns. Another, perhaps more frequent instance, is that the new glitch is met with disappointment and anger because it introduces annoying elements into the run. It could be incredibly difficult to execute, or just plain random, yet save too much time to pass on. On different occasions, the glitch can be so powerful to the point of outclassing all other strategies simply taking over the entire run and replacing a variety of exploits with one. In speedrunning, there are no universal rules. At that point, it is up to each game's community to decide how to treat such a finding to maintain the most enjoyment. With so many huge discoveries already shattering Elden Ring wide open, it was only a matter of time until a glitch of this magnitude would be discovered. And in May 2022, the Chinese community of Elden Ring players unraveled a controversial technique that would take over the speedrun throw the leaderboards into disarray, and reduce all of the boss fights into a pizza waiting to be cut. Ladies and gents, this is the Pizza Swap. After watching this, you probably have many questions. How is the Serpent Hunter mowing down enemies like it's nobody's business? Why does it have such an extensive range? What is all the menuing about? And finally, why the hell is it called a pizza swap? Well, let's start at the beginning. On 20th May 2022, a video published on the Chinese video site Bilibili showcased the glitch for the first time. The required inputs to execute it were not apparent at first. Still, when it was brought to the attention of the Western community about four days later, a swift wave of testing followed. In Elden Ring, when in the middle of performing most actions, changing equipment is impossible. This precaution exists to prevent the players from making changes during ongoing animations or abusing the action queue system, such as in the case of the Muswap glitch in Dark Souls 1. However, there is a specific animation where this condition partially breaks. In what is called a pivot, the character quickly turns around 180 degrees. A pivot differs from the turnaround animation achieved by swiftly changing directions while sprinting. Instead, players perform a pivot by exploiting the game's lock-on mechanic. During this animation, you can see the equipment tabs light up for a moment, making it possible to enter the equipment menu and if fast enough, even unequip or swap out items. This window is so narrow that it requires an exact set of inputs, but if done correctly, it can be heavily abused. When specific actions are performed and followed by the pivot, it is possible to exchange equipment without interrupting the original input. This has been known to have applications in Dark Souls 3 for some time, allowing players to, for example, buff otherwise unbuffable weapons or queue an attack with one weapon, then before the attack is executed, switch to a different weapon, carrying out the initial attack with the newly selected weapon. What can be done in Elden Ring with this mechanic is nevertheless much more broken than this. Let me explain what exactly happens during this ingenious glitch and how a stroke of luck makes it so incredibly powerful. As the footage was analyzed and further explanation was provided, the sequence of inputs became clearer. The initial action before the pivot itself was a stance. A stance is any skill that can be performed continuously by holding the L2 button. 
In Elden Ring, stances include Square Off, Unsheath, Wild Strikes, and Spinning Strikes, or even unique ones like the Spinning Wheel. After pressing the button to activate the stance, two options are present for performing the pivot. First, the player locks onto an enemy, sprints away for a brief moment, and lets go of any direction. The character then automatically pivots to face the enemy in a short while. This method is not very practical because it gives no control over the pivot timing and the player has to anticipate the automatic turnaround. The second, more hands-on method is simply facing away from an enemy and then locking onto it. This makes the character pivot in the same way. So a stance is tapped, then an enemy is locked onto. During the pivot, the equipment menu is quickly opened and the weapon carrying the stance is swapped for a different weapon of choice. This is the hardest part. To make it easier, left on the d-pad can be held during the process, which snaps the selection to the most left slot as soon as the weapons menu is open. When the new weapon is equipped, the menu is quickly closed and the stance key is held again. Due to the pivot, the game never registers letting go of the stance key. Therefore, a stance is being performed on the newly selected weapon. Before I clarify the consequences, let's show the entire process. D-pad left is held as the player faces away from an enemy. The stance key is tapped, the enemy is locked onto, and the equipment menu is immediately opened. The new weapon of choice is selected, equipped, and the menu is closed, followed by quickly holding stance again. Performing a stance on a weapon that shouldn't have one means the game lacks any info for what moveset to use. Therefore, it presumably defaults to the first one on its internal list. This is where the incredible stroke of luck comes into play. It turns out that the stance the game falls back to is the Gizus Wheel. Giza's Wheel is a weapon obtainable by conquering the phantom Inquisitor Giza on Volcano Manor's upper floor. The spiritual predecessor of this weapon was the Whirligig Saw in Bloodborne, whose appearance inspired the players to simply call it the Pizza Cutter. The same nickname transferred over to Elden Ring and is where the glitch borrows its name from. The Giza's Wheel stance is unique from the other stances in that it applies damage in very rapid ticks. Of course, it is balanced by quickly depleting the player's stamina and focus points, and also the damage it deals. However, these balance acts are entirely thrown out of the window when a pizza swap is performed. In that scenario, the game lacks information about the stance properties of the weapon, as there are none. Yet, it is fed information about the weapon's damage and hitbox. Remember this, it is important for later. The initial testing mainly served to understand the glitch, so the speedrunners used macros or slowed the character model down to make the swap easier. Instead of continuing my regular speedrun attempts, I immediately let the testing foray and figured out several important characteristics. While Giza's wheel stance is interrupted after running out of focus points, Pizza Swap can be held indefinitely, as long as the player's poise is not broken. This means both balancing elements of the Pizza Cutter are overcome. Stamina does not play a role either, making this glitch incredibly effective. The next thing that got me curious is why only certain weapons deal damage when Pizza Swapped. One by one, I tested almost all the somber smithing stone weapons, as well as regular weapons with all kinds of Ashes of War applied. In the end, two compelling conclusions could be drawn. For a weapon to deal damage, it needed to be a somber weapon. None of the regular weapons worked, no matter which ashes were applied to it. Furthermore, only weapons whose L2 attack had a damaging hitbox at the beginning of its animation worked. Any skill which started with a movement, a projectile, or something other than a damage in hitbox would not produce any results. This meant that only the initial hitbox of the skill was used during the glitch. The fact was confirmed by, for example, pizza swapping Loretta's sickle, which at first staggers the target, and only then deals damage. After performing the glitch, I could repeatedly stagger the targeted enemy, but couldn't deal any damage. The second characteristic, where only somber weapons with unique Ashes of War worked, left me a bit puzzled. It took some time before I put the pieces together. At this stage, I wrongly assumed it was the Ash of War data being fetched. I will come back to this later. Out of the selection of somber weapons, some clear favorites could be used in speedruns. Malekith's Black Blade proved that status effects were applied during the pizza swap, but the sword was too far into the game to be convenient. The Star Scourge Greatsword was another candidate, as it preserved its protection against Stagger alongside the Gravity Pull. However, it was the Serpent Hunter that would rise to the top. The Serpent Hunter is a great spear obtained during the Rykar boss fight inside the Volcano Manor. It is supposed to be a gimmick weapon used against the Serpent, similar to the Storm Ruler against the Storm King and Yorm in Demon's Souls and Dark Souls 3, respectively. 
While fighting the boss, the weapon gains special abilities only usable within the arena, obtaining both damage and range boosts. At the same time, its L2 attack becomes a strong stab and uppercut. None of this works when the weapon is used outside of the arena. Nevertheless, because the spear has no minimum level requirements, is a somber weapon and its charge attack packs a punch, it became a staple in some of the game's speedruns. However, the primary use of the weapon was intended to be killing Reichardt. As such, its default state was programmed to be the version active inside the arena. As a developer, it makes sense because if something went wrong and a failsafe routine needed to be called, you'd want to ensure the players can use the Serpent Hunter for its primary purpose. But this is where the magic lies. I said earlier that when pizza swapped, the game fetches the L2 data from the newly selected weapon. In this case, it reads the hitboxes set in Rykard's fight, meaning that not only is the player attacking rapidly, but the glitch now also has a giant area of effect. I initially believed that this was a unique property of the Serpent Hunter when pizza swapped, and that the weapon was simply broken. But later on, I realized that it is not just the Serpent Hunter whose default properties are used, but that any pizza swapped weapon reads the default state instead of the actual current state. This perfectly explained why none of the regular smithing stone weapons worked. Their default state is one without any Ash of War, therefore without any hitbox. It also potentially explained the one outlier to the projectile skills do not work rule, the Reduvia dagger, which kept a tiny hitbox when pizza swapped. I'd say that's because the default state of the weapon inside the game's code has a damaging hitbox at the start of the L2 attack and is not representative of what happens on screen. It took time, but with this, I finally fully understood the inner workings of the glitch, but that didn't make it any easier to execute. Performing the glitch with consistency is crucial for any speedrunner, not just to minimize time loss, but mainly because while in the glitch state, the player is limited to slowly walking around. No rolls or other actions are possible. Furthermore, because Pizza Swap drains the entire stamina bar, even after exiting the stance, there is a period when dodging enemy attacks is impossible. All of the boss fights effectively become a kill or be killed scenario. One must slay the boss before the enemy can attack them and interrupt the swap. This is why the first ideas for routes included using the Star Scourge Greatsword to gain extra poise and be able to tank one or two hits before the boss's health power was depleted. But as speedrunners improved their abilities, extra poise became unnecessary. The input sequence needed to perform the glitch is complicated because of the required speed, but also rhythm. Simply mashing everything as fast as possible won't fly. It is, therefore, no surprise that some time passed before the first speedruns utilizing the pizza swap materialized. The first runner to introduce the glitch to the All Remembrances speedrun category, where killing all of the game's major bosses is required, was a Chinese player called Sharkoro. Sharkova dispersed the initial concerns of late-game bosses not dying fast enough and completed the entire run only using the Serpent Hunter, progressively upgraded to plus 9. His overall routing essentially matched the previous fastest Sword of Night and Flame route, which you may have seen me perform at Summer Games Down Quick 2022. He reached the credits about 30 seconds ahead of the standing record. The run undeniably had weaker parts, but it showcased the potential of what could be accomplished with the pizza swap. Sharkova used the keyboard and mouse during the entire run, serving as an inspiration to other runners who would adopt the keyboard as the method for performing pizza swaps. The next challenger in line would be a German runner named Muftai. While he primarily followed Sharkova's route, he completed most of the run using a controller, only switching to the keyboard during the pizza swap sections. His execution displayed how much time could really be shaved off the Sword of Night and Flame route when he mended the Elden Ring in time of 1 hour, 11 minutes and 9 seconds. With how much damage the exploit could dish out, it was becoming apparent that upgrading up to plus 9 might be an overkill for the early game enemies, and foregoing some upgrades at the beginning might be a viable strategy. Meanwhile, I returned to the category and took it upon myself to figure out a way to perform pizza swaps purely on a controller. With practice and using some handy rebinds, such as changing the lock-on from R3 to R1, I developed a consistent method of executing the glitch. With it, I also tried to explore the idea of skipping the early plus 5 and plus 7 somber stones from the Volcano Manor. It meant that the first half of the run would be done with a plus 4 Serpent Hunter instead of a plus 7, which turned out to be possible. Some bosses like the Regal Ancestor Spirit became more random, yet the time saved from not picking up the early upgrades was well worth it, as I managed to snatch the record away from Muftai by over 3 minutes. 
improved execution and some minor optimizations pushed it all the way down to a low 105 with the same general route. That is, until WTEC was discovered. WTEC is a way to further exploit the Giza's wheel and make Pizza Swap even more broken. When holding the stance, whether in a regular or a Pizza Swap state, repeatedly tapping forwards hugely increases the frequency of damage takes dealt to enemies. This exploit can increase the speed on his damage up to 30% at its fullest potential. Fortunately for the health of our hands, mashing way too fast stops the character from moving instead of taking small repeated steps. As such, there's a limit to the damage increase, and gaining the full benefit does not require pounding the button with extreme speed. I suspect that taking a step resets the continuous stance animation to its beginning, where the first tick of damage is dealt. Repeating this process bypasses the downtime period between the two ticks. At first, this discovery led to some small strategies, such as skipping Malekith's death dialogue. Quickly ending the fight's first phase carries over his monologue to the second one, saving the runners about 6 seconds of waiting. Wait, what? What the f- However, it was soon realized that the damage from WTEC renders any upgrades to the Serpent Hunter past plus 4 redundant. The route then transformed, with the plus 4 Serpent Hunter used for the entirety of the speedrun. Using the new technique and route, the world record was quickly lowered to a low 1 hour and 2 minute run. Now, I need to address the elephant in the room. While Pizza Swap is a magnificent glitch and is honestly very satisfying to perform, it reduces all of the game's fights to simply executing it. Some enemies definitely deserve this treatment, but when the entire game is composed of two fundamental parts, navigating the world and fighting bosses, and the latter is essentially eliminated, the speedrun is bound to become stale and, with time, frankly less fun. Several players active during the Sword of Night and Flame days have not touched the game since the new discovery. Pizza swapping did not just take over the old Remembrances category. Any percent, where the goal is to simply reach the credits as fast as possible, saw its Icerind Hatchet route decimated. The glitch would also present the fastest strategy for the All Achievements category, but it is perhaps telling that, as of this video, only one runner has been up to the task. When a single glitch takes over most of the existing categories, the community is faced with the difficult task of eliminating the newly existing homogeneity and reintroducing variety to the game's leaderboards. So, what could be some potential solutions? Regarding leaderboard setups, I always suggest the Prince of Persia series as an example, the games that initially started my speedrunning journey in 2012. The leaderboards are split between standard, zipless, and no major glitches categories with additional completionist subcategories. This makes sense because in standard, where nothing is off limits, a zipping glitch takes over the entire game. Virtually nothing else is used because zipping is so powerful. However, because the game is also broken in many other ways, zipless exists to ban the glitch specifically, allowing the players to explore further strategic options. Finally, because Prince of Persia, at its core, is a platformer, no major glitches exist to emphasize movement alongside minor movement glitches. Unfortunately, Elden Ring cannot follow such neat categorization. The differences between PC and console versions already necessitated a subcategory split. Further separation into ones with Pizza Swap, those where Pizza Swap is banned, and then some kind of a glitchless equivalent risks segmenting the leaderboards into many categories where zero runs are submitted. The Prince of Persia example is therefore not applicable. Another option was to straight up ban the pizza swap. This solution, however, carries several problems. When a glitch not favored by the community is discovered, jumping to banning it might be highly premature. It can never be known ahead of time what that glitch will lead to, what kind of strategies will be developed, and how long the glitch will even remain relevant. Seemingly annoying findings can, with time, develop into intriguing routes. Bearing it also means fewer people are inclined to investigate a glitch, potentially hampering future discoveries. The last option was to come up with a fully-fledged glitchless category. Any glitchless proposal inevitably leads to arguments about what constitutes a glitch and what does not, what is in the spirit of the run and what is not. With Elden Ring, this dilemma is not helped by the fact that From Software have been actively releasing updates and often changing or removing many of the speedrun's mechanics. Having a consistent glitchless rule set was thus problematic. Although a difficult choice, it was evident that swift action was required, with numerous runners doing runs with rule sets not expressed on the leaderboards. 
The leaderboards ought to always represent the community and its wishes, rather than being unilaterally set up by a small group of individuals. Therefore, after lengthy discussions, a set of rules for a glitchless category was devised, mandating that all of these runs must be performed on version 1.05 or higher for consistency. Glitchless, on the one hand, does cut out other intriguing exploits next to the pizza swap. On the other hand, it succeeds in returning classic boss fights into the game. Leaderboards are not overly segmented, and arbitrarily banning one particular glitch was avoided. Further consideration deserves the likely DLC that may come out for the game. It is safe to assume that it will contain at least some Remembrance bosses, meaning that all Remembrances will need an update to reflect that. If other FromSoft games are anything to go by, the current All Remembrances without a DLC is bound to fall into obscurity, and the entire pizza swapping saga within the category would only be remembered by the history books as the 1.05 patch already fixed the exploit, and having the DLC active is impossible on a pre-DLC version of the game. In that instance, any percent playable on any patch would likely retain Pizza Swap as its central strategy, so the glitch itself would maintain significance. Honestly, this seems like the best case scenario, so we can only hope that a DLC comes out at a time of varied speedrunning strategies, once and for all keeping the leaderboards in a good place. That is, until something new game-breaking emerges, and with Elden Ring, you know that is bound to happen. Let me know what you think. Do you consider the selected solution of a glitchless category to deal with the leaderboard crisis adequate, or would you have preferred something else? I'd love to know your opinion. With that said, if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more Elden Ring and Dark Souls content. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.